What if I told you that your memories, the sacred archive of who you think you are, might be completely full of crap? Not like, oops, I forgot my keys again, but more like, remember that time you wrestled a bear in middle school? Which, plot twist, never happened. Welcome to the bizarre world of memory glitches, brain bloopers, and psychological plot twists that make your entire existence feel like it was directed by a drunk screenwriter. Let's count down the weirdest psychology quirks that prove what if everything you remember is wrong? Number 10. The False Memory Factory There's a non-zero chance you remember a birthday party from age 7 that included a clown, a pony, and a tragic piñata incident. Cute story. Only problem? You weren't even in the country that year. Welcome to the wonderful chaos of false memories, moments your brain confidently presents as fact but were either warped, copied from someone else, or Frankenstein together from a dream, a movie scene, and something your aunt once said at a barbecue. Researcher Elizabeth Loftus has built a career, and probably a few enemies, proving that memories can be implanted with terrifying ease. In one study, people were told they got lost in a mall as a child. Spoiler? They didn't. But after a little coaxing, many remembered it vividly, complete with emotional details and sensory memories. That's right, your brain can conjure up a trauma package on demand, like Amazon Prime, but for lies. And it's not just experiments. Eyewitness testimonies? Often wrong. Childhood memories? Probably edited. Your emotional retelling of the worst breakup ever? It's likely just the director's cut. So, Next time you're arguing with someone about who said what in 2014, just remember, you might both be wrong, but at least you're wrong with conviction. Number 9. The Mandela Effect Welcome to the multiverse of misremembering. You remember it. Everyone remembers it. That one line from that movie. Luke, I am your father. Except Darth Vader never actually said that. Cue the Mandela Effect, that glorious mass hallucination where groups of unrelated people remember something that never actually happened. Named after the phenomenon where people were certain Nelson Mandela died in prison, he didn't, this brain bug spreads like a retro fever dream. Other examples? The Monopoly Man never had a monocle. Pikachu doesn't have a black tip on his tail. And Fruit of the Loom? Yeah, no cornucopia never existed. But your memory insists it did, like a bratty toddler who refuses to accept bedtime. Here's what's likely happening. Your brain loves patterns. It fills gaps. It tries to make sense of things by leaning on stereotypes and prior knowledge. You expect the Monopoly man to look like a Victorian banker, so your memory slaps an onicle on him like a Photoshop intern on caffeine. It's like your brain is the unreliable narrator in your life story. Only difference is, you can't fire the writer. Number 8. Flashbulb Fictions September 11th, The Challenger Explosion, the day your celebrity crush got married. You remember exactly where you were, what you were doing, even what socks you were wearing. It's burned into your mind like an emotional Instagram filter. Except, yeah, those memories are probably wrong too. Welcome to flashbulb memories, events that feel vividly real and frozen in time, but actually decay just like any other memory. The only difference? You feel way more confident about them, which makes them especially dangerous. Studies after 9-11 showed that people's recollections changed dramatically over time, yet they swore on everything holy that their version was accurate. Confidence? Maxed out. Accuracy? Dumpster fire. Turns out, the emotional charge tricks your brain into tagging the memory as important and detailed, even if it's as factually stable as a Wikipedia page during a celebrity scandal. So next time you swear, I remember it like it was yesterday, consider adding, and yesterday was a blur, so take that for what it's worth. Number 7. Deja Vu, The Glitch in Your Matrix You're walking into a room you've never been in before. Suddenly, boom, chills goosebumps. You swear you've been here, had this exact conversation, maybe even wore the same socks. 
deja vu, baby. It's like your brain sat on the remote and accidentally hit replay, except you have no idea where the original scene came from. Scientists still don't fully agree on what causes it, which is comforting because nothing says peace of mind like your brain occasionally pretending it's in a time loop. The leading theory, it's a neural hiccup. Basically, your brain misfires and files a new experience into the been there, done that folder before you've even finished living it. Like if your memory system were run by a sleepy librarian on her third espresso. Another theory says it could be a delay between two brain processes, your perception and memory syncing up out of time. It's like a video call where the audio hits a second late and suddenly your brain's like, wait, haven't we done this before? It's the closest most of us will get to feeling like we're in a Christopher Nolan movie. Except, instead of time travel, it's just your neurons being drunk. Number 6. Childhood Amnesia, The Great Memory Heist Think back to when you were 2 years old. Nope, earlier than that. Go ahead, try it. Yeah, good luck. You've just run smack into childhood amnesia, the brain's adorable little habit of wiping your earliest years like an FBI cover-up. Despite what your mom swears you said at 18 months, the truth is, you probably remember nothing before age 3. And even that's pushing it. Why? Because baby brains are basically emotional Play-Doh. Your hippocampus, the brain's memory archivist, is still under construction during your toddler years. And even when it does start working, your language and sense of self are so mushy that memories just slip through like a greased-up watermelon in a kiddie pool. But don't worry. It gets better. Kinda. Around age 7, you start forming more stable autobiographical memories. Before that, you were basically a sentient potato with feelings. So the next time you feel nostalgic about your toddler years, just remember, that adorable memory of grandma's cat probably downloaded from family stories and photos. You were there, kinda, but your brain was not taking notes. Number 5. Misattribution Mayhem Quick, who said, be the change you wish to see in the world? Was it Gandhi? Oops, gotcha. He never actually said that. Welcome to Misattribution, where your brain mixes up the source of a memory like a bad citation generator. You remember hearing something, somewhere, but your brain can't quite nail the where or who. So it improvises, usually wrongly is how we end up crediting Einstein with quotes about bees, or thinking you heard a song in your childhood when it actually came out five years ago. The memory feels legit. You remember it. So you fill in the blanks with whatever makes sense. Or, more often, whatever flatters your ego. Even worse, you can misremember your own ideas as someone else's, or vice versa. This is why group projects in school turn into psychological wars over who said what first. Fun fact, this is also why rumors spread like wildfire. People pass on secondhand info with absolute conviction, never realizing they're just human game of telephone machines, only with less accuracy and more confidence. So if you're ever tempted to say, I definitely heard that somewhere, maybe just add, or I made it up in a fever dream. Safer that way. Number four, the oops, I invented that effect. Ever been 100% convinced you came up with a genius idea only to find out your friend literally said it five minutes ago? Congratulations, you've been blessed by the cryptomnesia fairy. Cryptomnesia is the fancy name for when you accidentally plagiarize yourself or someone else. Your brain logs the information but forgets to include the source tag. Later, it resurfaces like a brilliant original thought. You feel like a genius. Everyone else feels like suing you. This isn't just a party trick. It happens to professional writers, musicians, even scientists. In fact, Nietzsche once got caught quoting a paragraph he'd read before, word for word, thinking it was his own idea. Irony? He was writing about memory. What's wild is that your brain isn't trying to cheat. It's just bad at bookkeeping. It stores the idea, tosses out the label, and then serves it to you later like, here, fresh from the imagination oven. Only, it's leftovers. So the next time your friend claims they just randomly thought of that million-dollar startup idea you swore you mentioned last week, 
take a breath. They're probably not evil, just neurologically lazy. Number three, the confidence accuracy disconnect. Let me ask you something. How confident are you that you remember your high school graduation? Or your first kiss? Or that one time you heroically saved a cat from drowning? Very confident? Cute. Still probably wrong. <laughs> Here's the psychological trap. Confidence and accuracy in memory are barely friends, let alone related. But your brain acts like they're married. The more vividly and confidently you recall something, the more convinced you are that it must be true. And that's how we get overconfident eyewitnesses pointing out the wrong guy in court or people swearing they saw ghosts when it was just a coat rack in a spicy burrito dream. Why does this happen? Because confidence is often based on how easily a memory comes to mind. Not whether it's right, it's called fluency. So if the memory feels smooth and vivid, your brain gives it a gold star, even if it's completely fabricated. It's like trusting your gut when your gut is actually just a psychic raccoon rifling through a garbage pile of old memories. Bottom line, never trust your brain just because it feels sure. That's like trusting a magician because his hands are fast. Entertaining? Yes. Reliable? Hell no. Number two, emotion editing mode activated. Think your memory is a faithful recording of reality? <laughs> That's adorable. Your memory is more like a reality TV editor, cutting, reshaping, and adding dramatic music where it feels appropriate. And the biggest editor-in-chief? Emotion. When you're angry, you remember things as worse than they were. When you're happy, you remember events with a golden Instagram filter. When you're anxious, your brain adds 10 pounds of dread to memories that were probably just mildly annoying at the time. This isn't just bias, it's neurological architecture. Emotion strengthens memory formation, but also distorts the details. Think of your brain like a gossip columnist. It remembers the vibe, not the facts. That fight you had with your ex? You remember the slamming doors, the yelling, the betrayal. They remember you calmly disagreeing over pizza toppings. Same event, different highlight reel. So next time you're re-watching your life's greatest hits, just remember, the emotional director probably took some liberties with the script. Number one, your brain is a storyteller, not a historian. Here's the final plot twist. Your brain isn't even trying to be accurate. It's not a librarian dutifully filing events into neat folders. It's a chaotic screenwriter with delusions of grandeur, constantly rewriting your past to fit your present. This is called narrative identity, the idea that your memory reconstructs your life story in a way that makes you the main character, even if that means bending the facts, skipping scenes, or inventing dialogue like it's fan fiction. Every time you recall a memory, you're not pulling it from a vault, you're rebuilding it, fresh, from scratch, like some deranged HDTV contractor with no blueprints and a glue stick. And the more times you recall it, the more it mutates. This is why the same breakup, vacation, or awkward job interview seems different over the years. It's not just perspective, it's memory morphing to fit your current mood, beliefs, or need for emotional closure. You tell yourself you always hated that job, that you saw the red flags from day one, that you were destined for better. It's comforting, sure, but it's also a narrative sculpted out of brain clay and wishful thinking. Because, in the end, memory isn't a courtroom transcript, it's a Netflix drama you wrote, directed, and starred in. And the plot holes? Totally your fault.